Hey guys, so today's video is one I know a lot of you have been waiting on and it is my Walt Disney World haul for 2016. So part of the delay in this video going up is that I wanted to have sorted what was happening with my Disney vlogs before I put this video up so that I could let you guys know what was going on there. Basically I started editing my vlogs and clips that I remember filming have seemed to just disappear, like big chunks of days are missing, I have no idea what's happened, all my memory cards are emptied. Um, but I was emptying them onto my laptop as we were going through the holiday and then transferring them over and I need some, I need a serious amount of time to check that everything is there, that the stuff I think is missing, if it is actually missing or if it's somehow got lost in that process um, and I just haven't had the time to do that because when everything's gone onto the computer it's like the dates have been scrambled so I've got like a clip from day 7 then a clip from day 20 then a clip from day 3 and it's just not in any order and yeah it's just a bit of a nightmare so I just need a really long period of time where I can try and sort that out. That's why there's not been any more other than like day one and two. They're all scrambled. I haven't been able to sort it. That's what's going on. There will hopefully be more vlogs but I don't know if there's going to be like days right through to like day 22 or if it's just going to be like a Magic Kingdom vlog, an Epcot vlog, a Hollywood Studios vlog and an Animal Kingdom vlog. I don't know how it will take shape. Um, there will be more vlogs though so do make sure you're subscribed and everything for all of that um, because they will be coming but I don't know exactly when or what's happening with them. Um, so just to update you for anyone who has asked about that, that's also why I waited so long to film this because I wanted to have an answer to that before I filmed it, but I don't. But I didn't want to keep you guys waiting any long. Anyway, enough of an intro, let's get started. This kind of isn't organised in anything, it's just the order it comes in. So I'm going to do this bag first and this has got t-shirts in. And I didn't buy a lot of clothing. Do you know I buy a lot of clothing at Disneyland Paris, but I even the last time I was in Florida I didn't buy any Disney clothing I don't think um, but this time I got two t-shirts they're actually both from the men's section but these were just the ones that I liked the best so the first one is this one it's grey and it's got Steamboat Willie on it um, so I just really really liked that I liked the kind of vintage like look to it I liked the fact it's got a bit of Disney history to it um, and then it's from a collection that they're doing called the limited edition Mickey Mouse short films collection so it says that in the back but otherwise it's just plain and it's just this design in the front which I think is lovely and this wasn't very expensive it's $21.95 um, so obviously probably more like $25 once tax was on but $25 for a t-shirt it's not bad um, and definitely if you're looking to save money look in the men's section it's ridiculous but men do pay less for clothing um, for like t-shirts and stuff anyway like a women's t-shirt would be nearly $30 um, whereas a, man, a man's t-shirt you can get for like $20-$25 um, and this is the second t-shirt and this one's a little bit of a bigger design so that's it there it's not from the short film collection but it's a sort of similar aspect of it being sort of vintage looking so it just says take the grand circle tour, ride the rails um, and riding the train all around all the parks in Magic Kingdom is one of my favourite things to do I do it every single Disney trip the next item is one that I'm sure has been in like every Walt Disney World haul since this thing became available because it's amazing um, and it's a mug and I just want to show you as well like they do wrap everything up really well if you are buying breakable items so you can kind of buy these things and get peace of mind I'm sorry if my voice sounds really funny by the way I've kind of I had lost it, I'm sort of regaining it, but it's not totally back to normal yet. And I've got the cold, so sorry about that. But it is this chip mug, um, of course, because everybody now has to buy this. It's just absolutely perfect. Probably will never use it. I'm probably going to sit it on my dressing table there behind me and just display it because it's just amazing. Um, and it's $19.95, so it's $20. Again, plus that's maybe $22, $23. Um, but I don't think that's too bad for how cool a souvenir this actually is and I just think he's absolutely adorable. I really want the Cogsworth which I think was out when we were there because I saw people like posting hauls as soon as we came back that must have been there at the same time as us who had managed to get it but I didn't see it anywhere I don't know why I wasn't looking for it but the weird thing is I saw the Lumiere plenty of places and I said to Scott I was like I really quite like it because I'd looked at the Lumiere on our last trip as well and I was like, I really quite like it, but I would only want to buy it if I could get a Cogsworth to go with it, which they haven't brought out yet. Um, and then, like, basically a week after we came back, people started posting, like, pictures with Cogsworth in it. And I was like, what? Um, and we've been in the Beauty and the Beast shop several times, because it's one of my favourite films. And it's it's probably, it's tied with Hunchback, is my favourite Disney film. Um, and I just think that whole, like, part of Fantasyland is so well-themed and amazing. So we were in that shop a lot. 
and I didn't see this Coldsworth and then everyone seemed to have it and I'm fuming um, but I suppose it's something for next time but I've started um, started my little Beauty and the Beast film replicas collection thing with my ship mug and my other breakable item um, is this which is my souvenir glass from when we went to Trader Sam's which is at the Polynesian Resort this was the kind of nice thing about going like there was four of us that went this time rather than just Scott and I um, so we went as kind of a group of friends and it was quite nice because we did kind of take time to just go for a drink and stuff at night and um, because they weren't as kind of hardcore Disney we were also there for like 21 nights so we had a lot more time to enjoy doing stuff like that whereas Scott and I went um, for two weeks last time and we'd never been before and it was like trying to get around to everything we wanted to do and also the Christmas stuff was on so there was like special events to go to and stuff um, so this time like nothing was really started the, the Halloween decorations were starting to go off just as we left um, but the Halloween party hadn't started yet which was kind of a gutter because we thought we were going to catch the first couple of nights of it um, but it was really nice because it gave us that little bit more flexibility a little bit more free time um, so we went to Trader Sam's a couple of times actually uh, but this was, I can't even remotely remember what drink this was from that I had but this was the, the souvenir cup that I got with one of my drinks and it says Trader Sam's Grog, Grog, Grog Grotto in the back but I would definitely recommend checking out Trader Sam's you can see wishes from the like outdoor seating area of Trader you can see it from the Poly Resort um, we watched it from the beach one night at the Poly which was also really nice but you can watch wish wishes from Trader Sam's um, if you want and then inside it's really really cool, it's really well themed so I would definitely recommend there if you wanted to go for a drink which is this which when I first saw them I thought this was um, like a kind of china plate or something in the way it was displayed in the shop but it's actually plastic so perfect for travelling this was $6.95 probably $8.9 with tax on and I just think it's super super cute this is for Fantasyland they do have them for all the different lands um, Fantasyland's my favourite which is why I got this one but I think when I go back I might pick up the rest and they have really nice glasses to go with these as well but they never had a set of the glasses in any of the shops um, if you know what I mean like I would have had to walk to in one shop to in the other um, and I was kind of like confusing myself going between them which shops had which so it's definitely something when I go back I would like yeah start of a collection I think as always I got my traditional Disney tiara this time I actually wore it quite a lot around the park I usually just buy it and enjoy that I own it and wear it at home and have fun with it um, but this time I actually wore it in the parks a few days rather than wearing these because I find these can kind of hurt my head after a whole day of them I don't know, I must have a massively big head. Uh, so I was wearing this quite a lot as well because I was putting my hair up because it was so warm I was behaving my hair quite often just to get it off my neck and off my face and everything. I hate when I just put my hair back in a ponytail and I just look bald in photos. So the beehive was the way forward, um, hairstyle wise, for this holiday. Uh, and this went really nicely into it. So this was my tiara that I bought. This was a lot cheaper than the last one I got. I think this was about $60. The last one was like 120 it was so expensive but so beautiful. But what I really liked about this one as well is that in the ends, if you guys can see there, they just slot into your hair. But a lot of them now, they come with the pins, like the clips, plastic kind of, like whatever you call them. Um, big clips on the side which are harder for me to deal with. I like being able to just slot it in exactly where I want it. And then as well with these, it's easier to take it back out and rearrange it, whereas when you've got the clips and yeah, so... This was my tiara and I love it a lot. Next up I've got this little guy, so this is my Pirates set. Pirates of the Caribbean is one of my favourite rides. Um, it was actually shut, it was up, up for refurb the entire time we were there, the whole three weeks. I couldn't resist my Pirates stitch anyway, I just thought he was so cute. Um, he was $17, so again probably like $20 of tax on. Um, and I just thought he was absolutely adorable, so he's going to join my ridiculously extensive stitch collection. The second one I got is this one, so he's a little bit bigger. He's super, super cuddly. The one that I got on my trip last time was lovely, um, but he's not the most cuddly, uh, whereas this one's super soft and cuddly and squishy. He was, oh, the price has come off him. He was a little bit more expensive because he is that little bit bigger, what's he, maybe about $30, um, but he's just so cute. And then my last stitch, I reined it in after this one, my last stitch that I bought was this guy, so this is the little Yoda stitch. I actually, when we were on the Star Wars ride, I got picked as the Devil Spy, um, and I wanted to buy something to kind of commemorate that, um, but I didn't really want the, the I Am the Rebel Spy t-shirt. Well, I could have bought it, I'll probably buy it next time, but to be honest, it was just a great excuse to buy this little guy, because I was like, oh, well, now I technically was going to buy a t-shirt, and you know, I could just buy him instead. So, bought him, he was $16.95, which again, is not too expensive and I think it's probably cheaper than the t-shirt and yeah is he not just the coolest thing Scott's actually bought me the little Yoda Tsum Tsum out of the UK Disney store 
um, which is just so cute. I, I love Yoda and, and I love Stitch. And the fact the two go together quite often makes me very happy, so that's that one. And then my last stuffed toy was this little one. It's a little angel and she's like got a little squashed face and she's so cute. She's just like a wee squishy fat one and oh, I just think she's adorable. She was sixteen ninety five as well, so probably like like looking at the two, this one probably looks like more like something that sixteen ninety five than this one does. But I think they're both equally cute. They do have a little stitch that matches this one. I'm buying him next time. The next thing is this. So you'll have already seen this if you watched my Florida book haul, and um, because I did go a little bit crazy in Barnes and Noble as well. If you do want to see the rest of my hauls from Florida, I did like my Sephora haul, my US drugstore haul. Um, a fashion haul which I showed some of the bits and pieces that I bought in Florida as well as at home um, and then my Barnes & Noble haul so I'll link them all up below um, and I'll also link up my the first vlog that I've done and I'll link up my vlog from my last Disney trip if you guys want to have a watch of any of them um, and I'll also link up my last Disney haul because although it's a couple of years old now a lot of the stuff that I had in that video was still available and I would have still bought it if I hadn't already bought it. So the merchandise turnaround's not that quick. There was definitely loads of new stuff but a lot of the old stuff um, was still there so you could still get most of it. Um, but anyway, this is the Mary Poppins book so I bought this in Epcot round at the UK Pavilion and then we got Mary to sign our book. Next thing is this just little hairbrush. I actually forgot to take a hairbrush with me. I picked up this little guy. I actually had this already from Disneyland Paris but with Minnie Mouse on it so get a set. Um, and this won't show you the, it's just like a flippy one so that pushes out which I won't show you because it's got hair in it because I do use it and it's got a little better in this bit and it was 7 95 The next couple of bits I've got to show you are some art so I really wanted to get some artwork this time and I meant to get something with the rescuers on it um, and also something with Marie and Duchess from the Aristocats and I never got round to that but I did get two um, kind of pieces, well pieces of art slash photos um, and they are both of Walt so this one Walt as we know him you know the guy that we all recognise and then this is a slightly younger Walt which I just think is really nice um, so I find Walt Disney as a person just really inspiring like he created everything from nothing like him and his brother and I really like as well like his brother was sort of the one that did the business aspect and the figures and Walt just kind of did the dreams and ran away and did all the, the cool creative stuff that's my ideal business and life to be in I feel like when you go around Disney like especially the last time we were there there was parts of Animal Kingdom being worked on and like all around the boards it had like quotes from Disney and you can see them out with the parks as well but like he's all about dreaming and he's all about encouraging play and like don't grow up and you know he, but he's also very much like you don't dream you work and we build and no idea is ever, we don't take it at base level, we work on it and we, we improve and although he's a dreamer and very much a creative person and, and all that kind of stuff he's very much a hard worker or was very much a hard worker um, and I, I think that's I think that's where I struggle, I think I can get the creativity and the ideas but like when I'm writing, like at the moment I'm trying to finish a book that I'm supposed to hand to my editor or to my agent to hand to my editor about two months ago and I'm not even halfway through it and the idea is there but I need to be in the mood to write and stuff and that's not the way to do it like you need to be able to switch on and and work and you know that kind of attitude and I really admire Walt so I got these actually I'm fairly sure I bought three but I cannot find the third one anywhere so I must have only bought two and meant to go back for the third one or something um, but I thought I would get three or as it is two pictures and get them framed and have them above my desk so that I can have my my inspiration. These are quite good for travelling, they've got like cardboard in the back and they put them in a folder. And I also bought two postcards that I've then popped in the back of these for keeping flat while travelling. So the first one, um, I'll do some close ups of these if you can't see them properly. The original land um, where the castle and everything stands and then a picture of Walt in front of the castle kind of superimposed onto it to show what it was and what it became. This one's called Vision and it's got a little quote from Walt saying it's kind of fun to do the impossible. Just down there if you guys can see that there. So again I'm going to get both of these framed um, and then this is the other one which I adore this. You get this with Mickey drawing himself as a self-portrait. He's drawing Walt when he's looking in the mirror at himself and you also get um, the other way with Walt's the one that's drawing it but it's Mickey that he's drawing when he's looking in the mirror at his own self um, and I just I absolutely love this there was actually like 
a figurine kind of thing of this the last time that I meant to buy and I didn't because I didn't really have space and I was a bit worried about getting it home and stuff and this time I'd like decided I was buying it and I couldn't see it anywhere and that was really annoying but I got the postcard um, but I would definitely like the actual the ornament version. <laughs> the next thing is this little notebook. So this is like a kind of vintage looking one. I'd actually intended to make this my trip diary so I wrote up quite a few notes through our holiday about what we did because um, I did want to do a trip report in the dip. I was reasonably okay with it through to the 1st of September so it was good from the 23rd of August to the 1st of September so I was good for a week and then it just all went to pot so that was a bit of a fail but I'm definitely going to try and get into the habit of doing trip notes while we're away and writing trip diaries because I just think it's a nice thing to have and like that's why I feel so kind of with the vlogs I don't want to just rush and put up what I've got that I could mismatch together I don't want to take my time on it because I like watching back the vlogs for myself not just like my Disney contents the stuff that I watch back the most and get the most excited and nostalgic about like I would say the main focus of this channel is fashion and beauty like Disney is like it is a big part of it and it's the content I'm probably most passionate about um, as ridiculous as that sounds so I don't want to slap together some rubbish vlogs just because I can't be bothered sorting through it like I, I want to take the time and sort it and make the vlogs good for myself as much as for you guys so yeah that was a tangent but this is my pretty little notebook and it was 9 95 um, and I just think it's super cute so I'm going to start taking that in all my Disney trips from now on and get better at doing notes in them. I also picked up an Elsa pen. I love Udina Mundell and I love Elsa. I think Frozen as a film is a bit overrated. I will stand by saying that in my Disney um, or Blu-ray and DVD collection but I do really like Elsa as a character. She's just she's quite sarcastic. She's got a lot of depth. She's sassy. She's smart. I really like her um, although I do think the entire thing as a general rule is overrated. Um, so I, I couldn't resist a little Elsa pen um, and again this was 9 95 so probably like 11 12 dollars with tax on and when I'm in Disney I tend to pick up a little bit of Disney jewellery as well as my tiara so in this trip I got this ring which I'll do a close-up of because I'm sure you guys can't really see but it's a kind of sort of a pale lilac colour for the main stone and then the two side stones are just clear but it's beautiful it's on a kind of silver band um, and it's lovely. And then I also got these which are just like little earrings and um, they're just little Mickey heads but they're not kind of too big so they're not too like they're a nice way to have a Disney touch in everyday life without seeming like Disney 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 but I just thought they were really pretty they actually kind of reminded me of some Mickey head Christmas decorations that I have um, which is probably a weird thing to say but yeah I just really like. I also picked up this which is the Finding Nemo soundtrack. Really annoying though because I've got a Macbook and a Mac desktop and I wasn't thinking about the fact that neither of them have a disk drive um, so I need to actually take this to Scott's parents house where they've got a Windows laptop or not a Windows laptop but like a non-Mac laptop um, and like they have disk drive still so I can put this in their laptop then put it on a memory card and transfer it onto my computer to get it on my iPod um, but I've been listening to this in our older car because that still has a CD in it um, but it's the, the Finding Nemo soundtrack, did I even say that? I can't remember it's such an underrated show, it's lovely if you're going to Disney it's on the Animal Kingdom and it really is beautiful it's proper musical theatre um, I think anyone who's a musical theatre fan would love this show it's so underrated in comparison to all the fireworks and you know the like Lion King shows get your gymnastics and everything in it. It doesn't have anything like that but it's just a lovely lovely show and it's just the singing's beautiful, the songs are lovely and yeah seriously seriously underrated um, attraction of the park so I bought the the soundtrack because I actually wanted to buy it last time and I can't remember why I didn't but I thought I would be able to get it on like Amazon or something um, and I haven't been able to get it anywhere except in Animal Kingdom so I bought that um, and on a kind of side note I'm just back from New York as you guys know and I went to see Aladdin while I was in New York on Broadway um, and yeah it was lovely it's very pantomime very self-aware a little bit sarcastic but it has to be to carry off the difficulties of transferring Aladdin from screen to stage because obviously you know you've got all those animal characters you've got the genie who's like shape-shifting and stuff that like you know like that in the film different and you have to be open to that because there are difficulties in transcribing one to the other um but it's really funny um it's very good and Adam Jacobs who was our Aladdin was fantastic I bought his CD at the end but actually his CD and the Aladdin original Broadway um, cast who he's part of that so it was the cast that I saw which I don't I don't think it can be the full original cast um 
because I know it's transferring to London like very soon so it must have been running for a while in New York but all the main characters do seem to still be the original Broadway cast or at least who we saw the people that have recorded it as the original Broadway cast and that's all available on Spotify and the soundtrack is definitely worth a listen as is Adam Jacobs's CD he is just lovely and I hope he goes far because he's he's very talented and um, he's also not bad to look at so <laughs> yeah just as a, a side note about soundtracks there. This was the trip where I really get into pins. So I'm not really a lanyard person, so I bought this. So I'm gonna sort all my pins into this. So this is like a pin trading folder. Although I, d I didn't get into pin trading, I, I just buy pins that I like, that mean something to me, or that I particularly think are pretty or whatever. So I won't be trading them, I'll just be collecting them in this book. And that way I've got a place that they're all kept together and stuff, because I bought a few pins last time and they've just sort of kicked around and um, so I think this will be a really nice way to keep them all together and this was 23 95 so probably like 26 27 dollars with tax on um, but I think it's it means I'm going to actually appreciate everything that I bought because it'll be in one place um, and it'll hold obviously up my pins from Disneyland Paris and previous trips as well so that's my pin trading folder so now I'm going to go into all the pins and the pennies that I got but I'll just switch to a close up I think rather than try to show you them from over here so I got a couple of these little pressed pennies or pressed cents I suppose they are in the US um, so the first one is this one which has Disney's Hollywood Studios on it and then it's got Mickey as a director behind the camera. I just thought that was really cute. I picked up this one which is Stitch um, sort of as an aviator. It's got like the little plane above him um, and I just thought that was just super super cute. I just, as you guys know, adore Stitch so anything that's got Stitch on it. And then the last one I picked up of the press pennies is this little one and it's got Merida from Brave on it so the Scottish princess obviously. Um, and yeah, just had to represent a little bit. Um, although when we met Merida, she referred to her mother as her mom, and nobody in Scotland, like even in the film, she's called mum. Like she's not called mom. Um, and I was like, oh god, like basic, basic in character training. Like watch the film, notice that the word they use for mother is not mom, it's mum. Because if I was like, I mean, I know for me it's different, but if I was a child, that would have really confused me as to why she was calling her the wrong thing. I picked up the Merida pin. I really, really like Brave. I think it's a really good film and I really enjoy Merida as a princess. I also picked up a little Elsa pin because as I've already been through with the pen, I really like Elsa as a character um, and yeah, so I picked her up. The last character pins I picked up, it's Bernard and Miss Bianca from The Rescuers. Um, this is one of Scott and I's like kind of favourite joint films. There are a couple that we very much identify with. Um, we feel like their personalities are pretty much like our personalities as a couple. So we had to get these as soon as we saw them. And there's definitely not enough Rescuers merchandise. So this is one of the, the few little bits that we have been able to get. I also got this one for donating to the Disney World um, conservation fund. I picked up the Animal Kingdom Lodge pin. Basically I buy a pin from every Disney hotel that we stay in and yeah it was Animal Kingdom Lodge this time which was a really nice hotel. I do feel like it was really magical having the animals out the back. It was lovely but now that we've stayed there I feel like we've sort of ticked it off. Um, I don't know if it's one I would rush back to like there's loads of other ones that I want to experience but I would definitely recommend like everyone I think should experience Animal Kingdom Lodge just once because it's so different obviously to most hotels you've got the animals um and it's yeah it's lovely but i think port Orleans resort french quarter will probably always feel like home for us because it was the first resort we stayed in i really want to stay in art of animation actually i think that looks like an amazing resort and um, but weirdly enough because we got the free dining plan with staying at animal kingdom it would have worked out more expensive for us to stay at art of animation which is a cheaper hotel and add on the dining plan so just shows you have to look around at all your options um, the next pin I got is this one which is just a nice Walt Disney World pin. I actually wanted this specifically because it's got the hat on because that's now gone. It was gone before we arrived and obviously they're going to start phasing the hat out of the merchandise. So I wanted to pick something up that showed we had been there because it was there on our last trip. I wanted something to kind of commemorate that we had been at Disney World when the hat was still the icon for Hollywood Studios. I picked up this little Epcot pin. I feel like Epcot was like almost sort of the park of the holiday this time. Like it was a park that we, everyone kind of said, oh you really only need like a day in Epcot. It's not that great. So we didn't really schedule a lot of time in for it last time. We were only there for two weeks. We had so much to explore. And as I say, a lot of the Christmas stuff as well was on last time. So we spent a lot of time in Magic Kingdom for like the Christmas 
events and parades and shows and obviously Mickey's uh, very Merry Christmas party. So Epcot was one of the ones that we kind of, we only really I think went to like maybe two days of our last trip and we barely touched it. So we spent a lot of time in Epcot this trip and that was really really nice. This little guy moves. So it's like Figment, he's on Soarin'. I love Figment, he's my new favourite. Um, we loved Soarin', that was such a good ride. Um, and yeah, so that's our little Epcot pin. Just to commemorate how special Epcot was to us this holiday. I got this little one, so it's got the castle in the background and then the partner statue on it. And then it's got um, Goofy and Donald taking a photo in front of the partner statue. And I just really love this. Like Donald's my favourite of the Fab Five. Um, I love the partner statue. It's got the castle in the background, which is obviously pretty much the most iconic um, part of the park and definitely being on Main Street in front of the castle, just watching everyone's faces, that's like one of my favourite things to do. I could just sit there all day, so this is a very kind of special area for me. It's an area I really like being in, just in front of the castle, near the statue. I love that Walt is right there front and centre because where would we be without him? And then the last pin that I picked up is this one which is like, it's a ticket from Magic Kingdom established October 1st, 1971. This is your passport to adventure. And then it flips up and it's got all the little like banded tickets that were valid for different kind of, like the rides didn't, it didn't used to be like one ticket got you on everything. It's like all the rides had um, a classification. So A through to E and yeah, different tickets got you on different bits of the park and stuff. So I just thought that was really, really cute and I adore that. So. That's one of my favourite pins that I got. So that is the end of my Disney haul. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it wasn't too long. I was trying to go through everything quite sharpish, but without rushing it. I'm sure it'll still be really long anyway. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching it. If you do have any questions about Disney or whatever, do pop them down below. I do try to answer as many comments um, as I can. As I said, I will link up like my last haul video because a lot of the stuff was still there. Um, my last vlogs, my first vlog from this trip, and then my other Florida hauls. And as I say, make sure you're subscribed. Um, because there will be vlogs going up but I just want to make sure I take my time with them and that they are as good as they can be um, whether there is footage missing or whether I do manage to get all of it back together or whatever happens I just want to make sure I'm putting up the best Disney content that I can so I don't want to rush it and put up something substandard but I really hope you've enjoyed watching this I'm sorry if my voice changed a million times during it and sounds really weird um, such as life people get ill, people lose their voices it happens um but yeah i hope you enjoyed watching this thank you very much for doing so um please do like and subscribe if you did like it and you want to see more disney content or more content in general um but yeah thank you for watching and i'll speak to you later bye